but then we'll be through. Next is chapter number 16. The children of Israel have been brought through the Red Sea. Now you think about the, the multitude of these people of Israel. The multitude. Two million plus people that God had in hurriedly told, you know, told Moses. Moses said, get your stuff together, get your victuals together, get everything you got together, and we're not, it ain't going to be a few months, but we got to go. So these two million plus people down in the land of Egypt, they got up everything that they could possibly pack on their, uh, on their camels and, and on their donkeys, and they put everything they could get together out of their household, packed what food they had, and, uh, and, and out, off they went. And they come to the Red Sea, and the, the miracle of the Red Sea is, is a miracle that is beyond their uh, wildest imagination, but God did it. I don't have any problem in believing that God parted the Red Sea right in the, uh, right in the, in the uh, middle, right in the deepest part. And God parted that Red Sea, and two million plus people walked through on dry ground. I have no problem believing that. Do you? If you do, you just don't believe the Bible because it's there and it's true. And I have no problem believing they all walked through safely on dry ground. And on the other side, God defeated the enemy when he let the waves come crashing back down on them. And, and God defeated the enemy. I got no problem with that. And then two million plus people after wandering around uh, in the wilderness of sin. And we'll read that to you in a minute. After wandering around in that wilderness after a few days, uh, they got thirsty. And God turned the bitter waters into sweet waters to supply their need. Now look, friend, these people are totally dependent upon God of heaven to supply them with their sustenance as the days go by. Forty years God took care of them. Why should we not believe today that God will take care of us? Amen? We live, in, we, we live under some uh, pretty dire circumstances sometimes, and the world's getting worse and worse. But I'm here to tell you, thank God I believe God to give us bread from heaven when we need something for our soul. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to call upon thee today. God, we thank you for your goodness. And, Lord, we thank you for your supply. We thank you for the singing. We thank you, Lord, for the, uh, the good, sweet spirit we felt here already. I pray right now, God, that you'd help us. Lord, bless us around thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In, in the book of Exodus, chapter number 16, and by the way, you might watch out for flying objects during this message. And they took their journey from Eliam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of, of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died in the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, which we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill his whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and Gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, And even when ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt, and in the morning then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for, they, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that you murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord heareth your murmurings which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Moses spake unto Aaron and said unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation, of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, speaking to them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at the evening came, uh, even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. 
And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Now, friend, we see the whole story here, how that the children of Israel, two million of them now, and you think about it, we've been in the same shape, two million of them now was in the wilderness. Now, how, many, how much groceries does it take to feed two million plus people? How many loaves of bread would it take to, to feed two million plus people? How, much, how many quails would it take to feed two million plus people? And they didn't have it. What they had was the bread, the flour, the grain that they might have gotten brought with them and what few cattle and what few uh, other things they had brought, the goats and the sheep, whatever, that they had brought with them. And friend, it, it, what, what was happening was they were eating what they had and they soon saw that the bread was going to run out. They soon saw, and look, where they were at, you don't go out and grow a garden. Where they were at, you don't, you know, uh, they, they can today because of irrigation and things. But, but where they're at, you couldn't go kill a deer. It just wasn't there. They were in a wilderness where there was nothing for them to do but to depend on God. And they began to murmur against Moses and against Aaron. Moses was just following God. Aaron was just following God. And they were murmuring against the messenger. That's why I say, don't, don't murmur against the preacher if he's delivering a message. Hey Amen. You're doing it against God. And so they began to murmur and murmur and, and against Moses and Aaron. And Moses and Aaron said, look, you're not murmuring against us. You're murmuring against God. But God in his grace and his mercy looked down at them and he heard their murmurings like he does ours. He heard their murmurings and their groanings and their complainings. But you know, I don't read here where God rebuked them. I don't read here where God punished them. But I do read where God supplied their need. Amen. And I'm glad that God gives bread from heaven when we need bread from heaven. And oh, my friend, as we live in the last days and as we live where, where we know that we're going to need help of God, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 16 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Do you ever want a good piece of bread from heaven? I say, God, give us bread from heaven. God, give us food for our soul. Bread speaks of the blessings of God. Number one, bread speaks of the blessings of God. Now, bread here, uh, we know that as being, as being this kind of bread right here. We know that is what this is. This is bread. And like I say, there may be flying objects during the message. But that's bread. And we know that. But bread in the Bible speaks of uh, food. You know, food in general. And God give them bread in the morning. God give them quail at night. Man, I like quail, don't you? Quail's good. I had Last time I had it, I was over in, where was I at? Egypt. When I had quail, and they, I, they said it's quail. Somebody else told me it's pigeon. But I don't know. But it, it was whatever it was. It was good. But God gave them quail, all they could eat, to, and bread to the full. Friend, I want to tell you, if you need bread from heaven, God will give you bread. If you're suffering physically, God will give you help. If you're hungry physically, God, my God in heaven, will never let you go hungry. Amen. If you look to him, God will supply your need. Now, I'm hungry all the time. That's why I look like I do. I'm hungry all the time. All I want to do is eat. And if it's around me, I'll eat. Now that chocolate, them chocolates I give out to the kid, my wife threatened me if I brought them home with me. So I'm going to have to leave them here somewhere. For, because you know why? She knows I'll eat every one of them. Now I'm trying to take the pressure off you, wife, and you telling them you'll eat them all. But I, I you know, I, I'll eat them. But anyway, we, you, we, we seem to be... Listen, we ought to be more spiritually hungry than we are physically hungry. Did you know that? It ought to bother us more when we're spirit, spiritually hungry than it does when we're physically hungry. But we all love to eat. Is there anybody in here that don't like to eat? I don't see a hand raised nowhere. Now, how many of you like to eat? How many believe that you, can, you have to eat to be able to survive and to live? Listen, friend, if we're going to survive as Christians, we're going to have to have some bread from heaven. Amen? And we're going to have to eat of the spiritual things, of the good food of God, if we're to have, if we're to have the strength and the nourishment to go on. What happens if I don't eat? Now, I could go several days without eating and without getting too weak. I've got enough fat supply stored up to last me for a little while. I might get weak, but I'd live a long time. I'd outlive a lot of you in here because I've got a little more storage. Amen? 
So in a way, that's a good thing. Amen. It's a way that's a good thing because you can live a lot. That's what a bear does. He lives all winter off of the fat that he stored. So I might live a little longer than some of you, and uh, and uh, and uh, that could be a good thing. But I want to tell you, friend, if we don't eat physically, we'll starve to death. The children of Israel knew that if they didn't physically eat, they were going to starve to death. But I'll tell you something that's much more important than our, than our physical food today. It's the bread that we need God to send down from heaven to us. Amen. As believers, the church needs bread to be sent down from heaven that it might supply us and it might fill us with his glory and we might fill us with the strength and the, 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 the character that we need to carry on in this life. God send us some bread. Amen. God send us some bread from heaven. Amen. God dump a loaf of bread on us from, from heaven. Amen. God send it down. Thank God I'm looking for the day, friend, when God sends bread down from heaven. Amen. And I'll worry, I'll clean up the mess. <laughs> My wife said, what in the world do you need? Hey, I want you to know, friend, we need more than this right here. This is good bread, but we need more than that right there. We need bread from heaven from our, for our souls. Amen. Amen. What does bread speak of in the Bible? Number one, bread speaks of the blessings of God. Who in here don't need the blessings of God on your life? Is there anyone that don't need the blessings of God on you? I say God bless us. I say God bless us with a double portion of the Spirit of God. God bless us with your presence. God rain the Spirit down upon us. You say, preacher, you don't believe in the Spirit of God working today. I'm telling you what, friend. If the Spirit of God don't move and if the Spirit of God don't work, we'll die. Amen. And every one of us will die if God don't rain down upon us bread from heaven. If God don't rain down upon us spiritual blessings from Him, we'll all die and starve to death. You know what's wrong with most Christians today? They're malnourished. They're malnourished. They don't have nothing to eat. I, listen, I, I'm, I, I, God help us. I pray God help me to feed the people. No matter what else I do, God help me to feed the people. And you know what? I'm around people and they're malnourished. Talk to them. And they don't go to the grocery store to eat on Sunday. They go to the grocery store to buy physical food, but they don't go to the church, the house of God, their grocery store to get the bread from heaven, and they don't eat all week long. No, they don't open up the Word of God all week long. And they try, and if they do come to church and they do get in the house of God and the preacher's trying to feed them, what'll happen? Sometimes they'll find themselves trying to get it all at one time, but it don't last forever. I ate breakfast this morning. I get up and eat my oatmeal. I get three pieces of bacon and drink a cup of coffee. That's what happens every day. Unless I miss out and then it's McDonald's for a bacon chair, egg and cheese biscuit. <laughs> so I try to make sure I eat before I leave the house. It's good for me. So that's what I eat. And uh, I've already ate that this morning, by the way. But guess what? I'm getting hungry again. Hey, Amen. I'm getting hungry again. Why? You say, for preacher, you just ate two or three hours ago. Yeah, but that's the way you are. Hey, when I get bread from heaven, it lasts me for a good little while. But thank God, friend, I need it again. I get hungry for the word of God. I get hungry for the things of God. And I'm praying, dear God in heaven, send me some bread from heaven that I might eat it and then it might supply my need and it might give me some nourishment and some strength to carry on every day. Bread from heaven is, ne is necessary. Bread for our souls is necessary. Bread for our physical being is necessary. Bread, the blessing of God, you and I have got to have. Listen, if God didn't bless us, we'd none of us be here this morning. God blessed you with enough health and strength to get up and come to church. Amen. And if you didn't eat this morning, it's probably because you just didn't have time or you just didn't want to and you're waiting till after church waiting for the preacher to get through so you can go down and eat at the restaurant or go home. That pot of beans mama's got fixed. Amen. Oh, I left here last Sunday and I went to the, to the uh, oh my goodness, to the biggest feast. Did y'all know how, did you notice that I just ate one plate of food? I did not go back for seconds. But that plate of dessert was about as big as my plate of food. I made myself feel pretty good for that first plate, but that next plate, I made up for anything. Hey, you know why? I was hungry. Amen. And you get hungry for food. But friend, should we not be more spiritually hungry for the bread that God gives from heaven? God give us some bread. 
God give us some bread from heaven. It might feed our souls. It might nourish us. God give me what we need that we might carry on. Listen, you're living in a world of sin. You need to be able to, 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 to uh, not sin. You need to be able to reject sin. You need to be able not to, not to yield into temptation. You need to be ready and able not to yield to anger when it comes your way. You know how you do that? By bread from heaven. By the spiritual strength from God. Friend, if you'll get up and you'll every day, you'll start out with the Lord. You'll find out he's with you all day long. You'll find out when you lay down in your bed, your, your day has been much better because you got food from heaven. Now, if you're here and you don't know the Lord today, you're sitting there wondering what in the world is that preacher talking about? I'm talking about, friend, the bread that you get when you're a believer, when you're a child of God. I'm talking about the way God feeds you and God nourishes you and what God does to help you keep a smile on your face. No matter what's going on in life, God will help you to smile because he's feeding you spiritual things from heaven that the lost man ain't got a thing, don't know what to do with, and don't know anything about. Preacher, I'm lost. What do I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Come down to the altar and get right with God. God will save you. And you can enjoy, too, the spiritual bread. Hey, the Egyptians didn't come up and partake of their spiritual bread in the wilderness. God supplied it for his people. Amen? And God will supply bread for his people. Bread speaks of the restoration of your spiritual self. Bread speaks of that... Hey... Now, I'm going to ask you a question you can answer honestly or you can lie to me about. It's up to you. But how many of you here this morning have ever backslid on God? I ever hands raised. That's what I expected your help. I needed to talk to you for a long time. You know what happened when you got right with God? You got hungry for the things of God. You got hungry for what God might have. And, and I, listen, I did. I got hungry for what, what I was missing. I knew what I was missing. My, sometimes I miss my mama's cornbread. My mama bakes, bakes the best cornbread in the world. I'm sorry, Thelma, yours is good. But my mama bakes, bakes the best cornbread in the world. It ain't hot. It's just right. It ain't got the, it, it, it's not that, that hot cornbread. It's just good old baked cornbread. She bakes it in a black cast iron pan. In the oven, if she don't measure out nothing, she just puts it all in there. And when it comes out, man, it's just about that thick and just as golden brown. And man, it's good with milk. And when I sometimes I get to wanting that, and I go, to Mama say, and I she don't do it as much she used to because I won't let her. But she say, Son, you want me to bake you some cornbread? And not as much as you used to, probably. Ninety-five percent of the time, that I figure I'm gonna bring you some cornbread. You know what? Because I got hungry. bread from heaven speaks of our of our restoration of ourself the one that gives us strength 
Y'all are praying harder. I'm getting wore out quick one. But bread from heaven also speaks of the energy to survive. Amen. These little kids want to drink this stuff while we go. That ain't nothing to drink. That ain't going to kill you. But I tell you what it'll do. It'll do for you. If your heart will be playing out. What's in that book? It ain't going to give you no energy. But bread from heaven is what gives us the energy to be a Christian. Listen, if you want for God, if you want for bread from heaven, we trim up and die spiritually. We cry. And we be, you know, where you be this morning, if you want for bread from heaven, you'd be sitting in the house somewhere. See, people go dying out when they start, when they start not being in the house of God, they say they go dying out. They ain't got no spiritual strength. But we need that. We've got to have that bread from heaven to give us our spiritual strength, our spiritual nutrition. We've got to have that bread from heaven to give us the energy to survive. And I need energy. I feel pretty poorly this morning. I'm... I just don't feel real good. I think I'm wore out. I don't think I'll go to church today. I just spiritually, I just don't feel good. I just don't feel like going to church. I'm not going to church today. Well, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get hungrier. You're going to get hungrier. Now, sometimes, not very often, but sometimes I'm not real hungry. Not very often. But you know what happens? In just a few hours, I'm starving to death. I should have ate when I could. Amen. Oh, my friend, today we need to eat from God when God's got it for us, when he's got the table spread for us, and when he's given us bread from heaven, we need to soak it up and say, Oh, God, give me another slice. Amen. God, give me another piece of heaven. Give me a whole loaf. I need bread from heaven. It's necessary to give us the energy to survive and then what bread does? It speaks of all that we need. The children of Israel, God gave them bread in the morning, and God gave them quail every evening. Now, where they were at, they tell me that the quail migrated across the Red Sea, and when they get to the other side, they're wore out, and they, and they just hit the ground. And it's, you know, that's the way God had it to do it. That's the way God did it. That's fine. But hey, I'm God good. The quail come along, and they went and eat, and they picked all the quail they wanted. And then they Got all the bread, the manna. You know what they call it, manna? You know what manna means? It means, what is that? That's what the word meant. They didn't know what it was, so they called it, what is it? They said it's manna, and they called it, what is it? They didn't know. But boy, they picked that little piece of manna up off the ground. They put it in their mouth, and guess what? It's sweet to their tongue. Amen. It was sweet and nourishing to their tongue. God supplied their needs. God gave them what they need. He gave them everything. He gave them the strength to go. He supplied it. He never let them run out. Forty years, God supplied whatever they need. Bread speaks of all that we need from God. We need bread. Lord, help us to get the bread from heaven that God's got for us. You pray for this preacher that he feeds you the bread from heaven that you need to go on in life. Friend, we're living in last days. We cannot be weak Christians. We cannot be Christians that are, that are spiritually weak. We've got to be strong for the Lord. We've got to be strong Christians. We've got to be strong in the power of the Almighty God. If we're going to live right in this world that we're living in else, we'll, we'll go down and shrivel up and we'll not amount to anything as a believer. God, help us to feed from the bread of heaven. God is all that we need when it comes to spiritual things. He's all we need. Then last of all, bread speaks of the divine help of God. These people couldn't, they were running out of food. They didn't have anything. If it wasn't for God, they'd all go to starve to death. And I'll tell you something, too many people won't live long. They'll eat up everything they got. But that bread from heaven, that man that God sent them, that speaks of God's divine supply of all that they would ever need. All that they would ever need. That's what that speaks of. It just speaks of God's divine help. Again, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That bread speaks of God's divine help. And friend, when you need it, God's got it. 
He's got a ready supply. He's got a big store. He's got a lot of it. And friend, if you need bread from heaven, listen, you got to get hungry, though. If you're not hungry for the spiritual things of God, you're never going to eat anything. Oh, friend, we ought to be hungry for the things of God. God, give us a hunger. God, give us hunger pains for the bread from heaven that we might eat and that we might go out into this community and, and, and wherever we got a chance and spread. Hey, Sister Liz said it best a while ago. This is, should be a shining light on Gabriel's Creek. Amen. It ought to be the place where people know they can come and get something to eat on Sunday morning because they're going to need it through the week. And, friend, we need to invite people. Come and feed from the table of God. Amen. How do we get this bread? Number one, you must be born again. you got to be saved. you got to know the Lord. Preacher, how do I get saved? You've got to know you're lost before you'll ever get saved. You've got to be under con the conviction of the Spirit of God before you can get saved. And friend, if the Holy Spirit of God deals with you and the Holy Spirit of God draws you, then you need to cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Will you save me? And God will save you by His grace. And then, friend, you'll begin to, eat, begin to eat and feed on the bread of heaven. Amen. If you're a child of God, we've got to seek the bread of God daily in our lives. Give us this day our daily bread. We've got to look for God's help, and we've got to daily seek the Word of God and seek it for our food and for our nourishment. Are you hungry today? Are you hungry for the things of God? Church, are you hungry for the Spirit of God? Hey, last Sunday done something to me. Hey, man, I've not got over it yet, and I don't, dep I don't plan on getting on over it anytime soon. Thank God I'm glad for the bread from heaven. Amen. God, give us another meal. God, give us some more bread from heaven. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all your goodness. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, I pray, God, you'd send bread to us, God. I thank you, Lord, for feeding us today. And I pray, God, you'd send bread from heaven. Father, we might feed from the good things of the Lord. Someone here that's lost, I pray that you touch them with the spirit of conviction this day. That they might come to know you in Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. I preach to you what God's laid on my heart. That's it. I'm through. I want to pray someone here this morning and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. I don't, have, I don't know nothing about eating the bread from heaven because I don't know Jesus. Is there someone raising your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost without God. Is there one? While we wait a moment, is there one? God bless you. Is there another? Raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost without God. Is there one? I want to pray as a child of God here today say, Preacher, I'm hungry for the things of the Lord. I'm hungry for the things of God. God bless you.